This past Thursday, we got our first look at Halo Infinite's campaign, and what a sight of behold that was. We're going to break down some of what we saw and go over some of the details that have come out since its original showing, and go over some of the things that I personally noticed as well. Let's go ahead and get into it. First off, we learned that Halo Infinite is in fact going to be an open world game. One insider said before the reveal that he'd heard it compared to Halo meets Skyrim, and going off of the gameplay shown, it's easy to see why that is. The gameplay itself opened with Chief and the pilot, who we still don't know the name of, discussing a plan of action. There is also an official confirmation from 343 of a day-night cycle, which we get a bit of a hint of as the gameplay begins with a much sunnier sky, and after Chief wakes the pilot up and steps out of the pelican, we can see that the sky representative more of a sunset time span. In the map screen, we get to see a tab that says Upgrades. Chris Lee, the studio head on Halo Infinite at 343, said that while the Chief doesn't have an XP meter, or a super deep skill tree, players can expect to find cool upgrades for their equipment in the open world environments. The map also gives us a look at which objectives are available. Some of these objectives look like kill missions, rescue missions, as well as bases of operation like Echo Base and Golf Base, though it is unclear as to what these might be used for other than maybe hubs for the player to potentially stop by on their adventure to maybe pick up marines to carry into battle with you. 343 has confirmed that while there is a story with a beginning, middle, and end, players will be able to tackle any objectives laid out before them in any order they want. A true level of freedom that has largely been missing in Halo since the second mission of Combat Evolved. We also see a tab in the menu designated Database, which could lend itself to cool collectibles and hidden lore pieces like Mass Effect's Codex or Destiny's Grimoire that help to expand the universe not only for new but also returning players alike. One of the first elements of the gameplay itself that we get to see is that Sprint is definitely in the game, and in the campaign at the very least, didn't seem to be tied to shield recharge, but neither is it in Halo 5's campaign. Worth noting, in this gameplay demo we saw, Sprint did not seem to increase player movement by very much, meaning that if it is in multiplayer, it probably won't be as big of a crutch as it is in Halo 4 or 5. Also, we see Sliding and Clamber make a return, though I imagine these abilities will likely not be designed around in multiplayer. It is also worth noting that we did not see any evidence of Shoulder Charge or Ground Pound making a comeback, which is, in my opinion, a positive. Also revealed was a return to classic scope mechanics rather than Halo 5's smart scope. We can see in the gameplay's UI that the left trigger used in Halo 5 to zoom like in other FPS titles with ADS is now back to being grenades like it was in Halos 1 through 4. We also got official confirmation that the leak from December 2019 of the grapple hook is in fact real, as Chief will have use of what is being called the grapple shot throughout the campaign and will work as a map pickup in multiplayer also confirmed by 343. The grapple shot can be used to scale areas, bring in objects to be used such as fusion coils and presumably weapons, as well as quick maneuvers to close the gap between yourself and the enemies. This new mechanic did lead to my favorite part of this demo, when Chief grapples a fusion coil and throws it at a shade turret. We also saw two new equipment items, one that was featured prominently in the 8 minute gameplay reveal, which was the drop wall. Very similar to a bubble shield, but this one Chief can now shoot through that will also deflect oncoming fire and grenades. And we also saw what looked like an electrified stun item that could be seen very briefly in the campaign trailer that was released after the event concluded. I know some people thought it was a type of grenade, but something tells me that this is going to be an equipment item rather than a fourth grenade type next to the frags, plasma grenades, and spike grenades that we saw in the demo. We also got a glimpse at Chief using a visor-like scan to search the environment that also highlights some key things such as the objective waypoint that was set earlier in the demo, as well as items that the Chief can use in the environment like the fusion coil that he eventually throws at the turret. In the portion where Chief is driving the Warthog, which seems closer to the Halo 4 incarnation but with a great new sound design, we see him run over a suicide grunt and blow out the front driver's side tire. Really cool to see fully realized destructible vehicles, at least in the campaign. Speaking of the suicide grunts, we got official confirmation again that broods will occasionally throw them at you. And in this demo, we hear the brute doing this, shouting, Die for the Banished. Very cool. I love this. 
Other than the equipment, which has been referred to as a successor to Halo 3's equipment, which is super red, in my opinion, the weapons on display were pretty wide and varied. First, we do see the classic assault rifle sporting the Halo Reach style design, but then we also see the pistol Chief is carrying on his hip isn't the classic Magnum. Instead, it is the first in a wave of newly introduced weapons. The weapons that we saw include, like I said first, the MA-40 assault rifle, the MK-50 sidekick, which is this new pistol, the VK-78 commando tactical rifle, the Ravager launcher, which looks like a smaller brute-themed Promethean incineration cannon kind of launcher, the pulse carbine, which is a three-shot carbine, which seems to be a, a good middle ground between the carbine itself and the storm rifle, the mangler, a sidearm-like brute pistol that seems to be a spiritual successor to the mauler, the BR-55 battle rifle, pretty standard with a classic scope on it, which is awesome, the energy sword, again, very standard, and finally the CQS-48 bulldog, which looks Looks like a faster rate of fire but weaker shotgun. Some of these, including the BR and the sword, were only in the campaign trailer and not in the gameplay demo itself. As pointed out by Chris Lee to IGN, the brute weapons with large spikes on the ends have melee damage bonuses, though it will still require the same amount of melees to take down a fully shielded Spartan. When an enemy player is at 50% or less shields, one melee will do the job. Something else that we see with some of the weapons during gameplay is the inclusion of the new weapon and damage types. This will likely lend itself to more expansive combat encounters than just the ones that we saw today, as well as helping new players figure out what each weapon does. A key thing to note is that as of this demo, some weapons the Chief walks over, including his own AR-40, do not display the weapon type information. We see a plasma pistol at one point missing this information, and later on in the trailer it is visible when he walks over another plasma pistol. This is likely due to the game being early in development and not everything being finalized. Though perhaps the most interesting one of these was the Needler's designation. We don't really get to see it much, but when Chief does walk over a Needler, it reads SMG Kinetic Auto. I think it's very interesting that the Needler wouldn't receive the plasma or perhaps its own unique weapon type designation. Next is our big bad for the story. When the gameplay opens, we get confirmation of the game's date, May 28th, 2560, and then the subtitle 167 days after we lost. While we're not sure what we lost, it seems that neither side was completely victorious as the new main antagonist, Esherim, is the new leader of the Banished, seemingly pointing to Atriox's demise at some point in those 167 days. Also, we get a shot of a hologram highlighting every UNSC presence in the area surrounding the ring, which then quickly changes to Deceased. Obviously, humanity has lost big time, and the Chief is their only hope once again. This new antagonist does seem to have a personal grudge against the Chief, or at least humanity at large, so it'll be exciting to see the culmination of the game's final showdown. Also mentioned at the end of the trailer is a new faction or enemy known as the Harbinger. Other than the name, we only know that they're working with Estrum and the Banished, or at the very least that they share a common goal. While some people have theorized it could be Cortana, I imagine she would have no problem being called by name rather than some new title. Personally, I'd love to see the Didact make a return to help connect Halo Infinite to Halo 4 in a really cool way, but remember that Didact is only a title, his original name being Shadow of Sundered Star, and Didact might be a name he may not feel worthy of anymore given his defeat at the Master Chief's hand in Halo 4. We'll have to wait and see what that is. But as a matter of fact, I did decide to Google what a Harbinger is, just for the sake of it, and this is what I saw. According to the Oxford Dictionary, a Harbinger is one, a person or thing, that announces or signals the approach of another, and two, a forerunner of something. A forerunner of something? You cannot tell me that this won't be the didact at this point. Some people have pointed out that this little snippet that we see with the triangular lights and Chief's visor potentially could be mendicant bias, but the jury is still out on whether or not that would be the case. Unfortunately, while it is a cool theory that we would get to see Mendicant in the campaign, it is technically upside down compared to Cortana's interpretation of it in Halo Legends. Finally, for the story details, Estram mentions that the ring is under his control and that the auditorium would be soon as well. 
We don't know what the auditorium is yet, but judging by its overwhelming presence in every single piece of key art that we've seen, as well as being in the background for most of this demo, it's not unlikely that what we once thought was the Palace of Pain is in fact actually the auditorium. As for the enemy designs, there's a ton on display here, and it looks like they are either going to be a good mix of both 343's most recent designs and the more Bungie-era classic designs as well. The elites look great, the grunts, the jackals, the brutes, and everyone in different flavors of armor ranging from Halo 1 to 3 colors to the banished reds and blacks. 343 has definitely nailed the look of the Covenant forces here. One thing I have seen thrown around is a general confusion about the drop pods that the banished brutes land in blowing up after they've emerged. It's likely because 343 wants players to be able to explore this area multiple times, and leaving these drop pods here would eventually either clutter the area and bog down the game, or the sense of realism and continuity would be broken because when you were last here, they stuck around, and now that you've come back to explore again, they're gone. This way there is a canon explanation for why they go away. One thing that I personally wasn't a huge fan of, but could see myself getting over, is the phantom design for the banished phantom that we see early in the demo and then again a little bit later on. Super blocky, I'm not sure why they decided to make it look like it's ripped right out of Halo Wars 2 gameplay, but to each their own. Well guys, that's about it for now. I, I want to know what you thought down in the comments. Did I miss something that you saw? Personally, I was very, very happy with what was shown, and for the most part, the gameplay lined up with what I thought we'd be seeing. I am absolutely over the moon excited, if not more so excited than I was before the demo, and I cannot wait to see more. 343 said that the next thing up on BAT is going to be our first look at multiplayer, and as soon as we know more, or when we can expect that, you can count on it that I'll be right here to share that moment with you too. Make sure you like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, follow the links in the description box below, you can find me on Twitch, of course at twitch.tv slash forebear, and I am holding a giveaway still that ends at the end of next month. More details on that in the video in the top of your screen now. Now guys, I hope that you enjoyed everything that you had to see today. Until next time, be safe and have fun.